Niacinamide. This ingredient has found itself in every skincare product and rightfully so, a lot of people are frustrated because they're not seeing results with this ingredient. Is it because niacinamide is a scam? My name is Dr. Shaw. I'm Dr. Maxfield. Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about why you may not be seeing results with niacinamide, despite the fact that you hear every influencer talking about this ingredient. We're gonna talk about how to use it in your routine, and we're specifically gonna talk about what ingredients you need to pair with your niacinamide for specific conditions like dark, dark spots, like acne, like oily skin, like large pores, like redness, so that you can actually see the results that you're trying to achieve. Right, and it's not just influencers that are talking about it. I, as a dermatologist, have talked about this for years, but there seems to be some misunderstandings about how you need to be using it, how I need to be using it, so we're gonna clear that up. Niacinamide plus for your skin. Here we go. Here we go. So what is niacinamide? Niacinamide is a derivative of the vitamin B3. We have an entire video of niacinamide that you can go back and watch. This was before we even had a real camera to shoot with. Uh, so you can see how far the video production has come in this video. But the knowledge in that video is exactly the same. So it's still valuable for people to go back and watch. But it's a type of vitamin and it does so many things for the skin. But we've said in the past that niacinamide is the jack of all trades. It's actually one of Dr. Maxwell's favorite ingredients, but it's the master of none. And so when you see niacinamide in an ingredient list, a lot of people think, oh, this is gonna do all the things that everyone says it does. Shrink pores, help with fine lines and wrinkles, help with skin sallowness, help with dark spots, and it does help, but it's definitely not the hero ingredient. Right, and this is something we have, I feel like almost belabored over the period of years, is like this is a supporting ingredient. And I love the phrase like jack of all trades, master of none, because that is exactly where this lives. And this is exactly why it is a top tier supporting actor in terms of how you can use it in your skincare, because it's probably going to be helpful for most people. It covers aging changes, acne changes, even skin barrier health changes, and that combination is extremely rare. Not even, I would dare say, not even something like a retinoid can boast all of the changes as completely as niacinamide. But conversely, a retinoid falls into the category like tretinoin. This is jack of all trades, maybe master of one, maybe master of two, um, but niacinamide does not fill that role. On the flip side, because we see niacinamide now in every single product, it's in your cleanser, it's in your moisturizer, it's in your sunscreen, it's also in your treatments, and now you have just tons of products with tons of niacinamide in it. We're actually seeing groups of people who are saying that they can't tolerate products with niacinamide. This is a function of it just being everywhere. Anytime you put an ingredient in everything, you start to see the select group of people that can't tolerate that. And so invariably in the comments, we'll see that some people just cannot tolerate niacinamide at all. Yeah, some people say it irritates their skin and that's reasonable. For some people it will, for multiple reasons. A derivative of niacinamide, or actually the primary form of niacin, niacinamide is called niacin, and when taken by mouth or even topically can cause flushing. So this ingredient isn't perfect. And it also lends into the idea of how much should you use? Because perhaps you're thinking, oh, it's in all my products, but is it enough? and you see a bottle on the shelf that says 20% niacinamide, 15% niacinamide, and you're thinking, oh, of course, that's where I need to be going to get the benefits. And uh, this is actually not true. So for niacinamide, even in our original video way back in the day, we found that the body of evidence supp supports concentrations of less than 5%, even less than 4%, even as low as 2% of having benefits on the skin. And the irritation threshold does increase with concentration. So if you get above 10%, probably unnecessary. If you get above 15%, probably completely unnecessary. And you will will still get benefits. Again, concentrations lower than 5%. Right, absolutely. So when we look back at all the literature, everything that we were saying about niacinamide being great was done in those lower concentrations. So it doesn't mean that you need more concentrations. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you do 10, 15, 20%, it's gonna cause problem in your skin. So if you're using a product with 20% niacinamide, I'm not saying to stop that product, but just so for people to know, you don't need more to see the results because all those studies were done in that 5% or less concentration. Next question is, does it matter what type of product your niacinamide is in? So if it's in a sunscreen, is it gonna have the same effect? If it's in a serum, is it gonna have the same effect? And does it need to be a certain form of niacinamide? And the answer is no. It's an incredibly stable ingredient. It will penetrate into the skin regardless of what form it comes in. So even if your sunscreen, for example, you're using the Alta MD UV Clear, which notoriously has 5% niacinamide, you don't need to necessarily use 5% niacinamide in a serum to complement that when you already have that in your sunscreen. It's gonna work regardless. And that's why you see it in a lot of skincare products because unlike an ingredient like vitamin C, which is is extremely finicky and hard to work with. Niacinamide is actually very easy to play with, and so you find it in a lot of ingredients and a lot of products, and you don't need to find a separate serum with that ingredient in it. Right, and the only way I would split this is probably like rinse off versus leave on. So the La Roche-Posay Blue Tellurian Foaming Cleanser has niacinamide in it. I would not allow, I don't think that your rinse off niacinamide is complete and 
would have an effect enough to replace niacinamide in any of your leave-on steps. So if you're doing it in your cleanser, I would still say you might benefit from a leave-on product. And again, it could be in a toner slash essence slash serum slash lotion slash cream slash ointment slash sunscreen. One of those der derivations of niacinamide would be sufficient. Niacinamide ointment would be an interesting Yeah, I don't know product. if it exists. I don't even know that it exists, <laughs> but I, I like the concept. It's probably maybe somewhere. We could, maybe we could do something with that. All right, so the next question is, how are you actually going to use this into your routine to see results? Because we've said it's a great ingredient, but we say that it's not uh, uh, the master, it's not the leader, it's not the hero of the show. So how do you get this in your routine so that you get the benefits of niacinamide, but you also achieve the results that you're looking for? And this is one of the frustrating things about skincare is that you have a lot of people who are talking about skincare online and they talk about a product that they love and they say that this product has helped them a lot. But then you wonder, why is this product not helped me a lot? And everybody's starting at a different place. Everybody has different skin problems that they're trying to address. So if we look back at this video, she has pretty pronounced hyperpigmentation and dark spots on her skin. And she's going to need something that's a little bit more of a heavy hitter. In fact, she's going to need an entire routine designed around this skin issue so that she can see results. So just having niacinamide in one product that an influencer recommended that was in beautiful packaging is not the solution for a skin issue like this. Now, if she had some maybe wanted some mild increase in brightness or she had some minor discoloration, then maybe niacinamide can do the lifting there. But if somebody has dark spots, like this, you really need to dive in and have an entire routine built around it. So dark spots being created by pigment production and being transferred from the pigment making cells to your skin cells and then being deposited and held onto by your skin cells, you need to address all of those steps. And niacinamide, although it addresses some, doesn't address all. And even the ones it does address, it doesn't address extremely strongly. So you can add multiple different ingredients to your dark spot routine. I would always start with your retinoid. This is one of your master ingredients and it is going to remove the pigment production, it is going to decrease pigment production. I'm sorry, it's going to remove the existing pigment, decrease pigment production. It's going to do all the things, decrease transfer. And you can also add in multiple other ingredients that are going to block pigment production. There's a laundry list of these. And you can pick like kojic acid, tranexamic acid. Uh, we talked about this before. Soy, um, vitamin C. Well, I don't know where my mind is going. I know I usually can list like 10. What am I missing? Well, Alpharbutin. Here we go. So we were <laughs> going to put up our chart that we made in our previous dark spot video about how to treat dark spots and the different steps that each ingredient targets. So you have your tyrosinase inhibitors. That's the creation of pigment. You have to block that step if you want to prevent new, new dark spots from forming. Now, acinamide helps a little bit here, but there are some other better ingredients and you probably want more than one tyrosinase inhibitor. So step two, the transfer of pigment through the melanosomes. You want to block that as well. There's few ingredients that do this. Niacinamide helps a bit here, but then finally you have to remove that existing pigment with niacinamide actually has no help here. And this is where you need your exfoliating acids and your retinol. So if you look at this chart, you want to mix and match ingredients so that you can come up with a full routine that's blocking all three steps and that you'll actually see results here. One of the best products for this is a prescription product called Triluma, which is a combination of hydroquinone, which is the tyrosinase inhibitor, tretinoin, which removes pigment and is a tyrosinase inhibitor and is a melanosome transfer inhibitor. And it also has a steroid that helps with some of the inflammation that occurs with those two ingredients. And so it really knocks down all three steps. We also have Remedy for Dark Spots, of course. I love this product because it also blocks all three steps. It's my hero product and people love this and we see amazing results on our website with this. And so you really wanna target all three steps and not just hone in on that niacinamide. But finally, you definitely need a tinted sunscreen to complement your routine because no matter what steps forward you make with blocking all these steps, if you're not preventing new dark spots from forming by triggering those melanocytes, and you're not going to see any results. So you need to wear a tinted sunscreen to block visible light, UVA, and UVB light. And finally, if these dark spots are from acne, if you're not treating the underlying acne, you're going to continue to see new dark spots forming. And so if you do those things, you will see results eventually with time. And if none of those things are working, then definitely go see a dermatologist. So as you can tell, dark spots can be tricky or cumbersome at best to treat, but it always takes a whole team to really have any sort of meaningful result. So that's dark spots and just organizing this here, we have your supporting ingredient, niacinamide, and then you have hero ingredients like exfoliating acids and retinoids. Now, moving on to oil control, we have our supporting ingredient again, niacinamide. Now, what hero ingredient would you want to pair this with? Right, so oil control, don't expect massive results when it comes to oil control and niacinamide or really with anything at all. Unless you're taking oral vitamin A, Accutane, oil control is gonna be very difficult to achieve for somebody who's really, really oily. Now, in that case, niacinamide is helping a little bit and there are good 
good studies that show that it helps to regulate oil production. I would pair it with salicylic acid, likely. I think salicylic acid because it's the only lipophilic acid. It's able to get deep into your pores and it is phenomenally good at removing oil. I see this if I put salicylic acid in my hair. I see this if I put out salicylic acid in my T-zone. I think it's probably the most effective at removing oil and so probably those ingredients together which actually pair very well together are probably the best for oil control. Nice. Okay, so you know, this is kind of like a more like hero sidekick kind of thing. I, I'm kind of feeling, like, every time I picture this in my brain, like niacinamide has the little cape and then retinoids or in this case salicylic acid has the big cape. But uh, anyway, next up, next up. So that was oil control. Next up is acne. So niacinamide does have the claim that it can help with acne. And this is a, a unique feature. Not a lot of ingredients can actually boast this. But again, little cape niacinamide, big cape here. I mean, how could it not be tretinoin it's, or adapalene if it's over the counter? But again, is, is our retinoids going to be the answer for everything to parasites? Well, no, we said salicylic acid, I suppose. Um, and then with dark spots, there was a slew of ingredients, I suppose, you could pair. Retinol is going to is is the hero of the show and the jack of all trades, right? In, in many ways. But I think with, with acne, yeah, it would be a massive mistake, in my opinion, to just use niacinamide alone. And I think I see this very, very often, especially in young people who okay. come in my office. They have a lot of products with niacinamide and they're like, why am I not getting better? Every Everybody says that niacinamide is the ingredient to treat acne. I think it's a great ingredient to have like in a moisturizer for somebody who has acne or is acne prone. That being said, I almost look at it as like a non-starter when it or a non-consideration, I suppose, in in the treatment of acne in many ways. So I would say pair it with adapalene. Adapalene. Yeah, there it is. That's you. that's your over-the-counter condition. And, and there's this is interesting too because this is like the in-office perspective, like the clinician perspective versus the general public perspective. Can niacinamide help acne? Yes. If you or limiting yourself to over-the-counter options, would you pick acne? Would you pick niacinamide to help through acne? Yes. When you walk into a dermatologist's office and you're like, I'm using niacinamide for my acne, that's something they never would have considered to even introduce to you because prescription in the prescription world, there are just so many much more effective options. So that's, again, something you'll hear more on the social conversation than you would in the office. It goes one step further here because, you know, I know we're trying to do one in one pairing in this situation, but adapalene niacinamide, great combination if you're going to pair it with something. I also think azelaic acid paired with niacinamide is another good option for the right person. Like, let's say, for example, someone is pregnant with or me. someone is acne with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. I think azelaic acid plus niacinamide is a lethal combination there. So that's the, okay, that's the key caveat here. I, I was wondering, I was going to interject and say, maybe we should just make like pregnant women like their own category with niacinamide because it is. It is like, it is an, if you're pregnant, your ingredient options can be so limiting. Mm. Then you have like niacinamide and azelaic acid. That is lethal. Like that, that's for your dark spots. That's for your skin. That's for your acne. Like I'm with you. That is a killer combination for someone who is pregnant and can't use much else. Yeah. You know, it's interesting uh, because <laughs> pregnancy is not a skin condition. <laughs> so, so but, but we've thought about this because we, you know, a lot of, we get a lot of comments like you need to come out with a remedy for pregnancy. And I'm like, that's probably not the right <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what skin conditions do we see during pregnancy? And then how do we come out with a product that is safe during pregnancy, but is able to go after those conditions? And then what would you name that product? Maybe leave in the comments what we would call a remedy for pregnancy without making it sound like it's like a solution for pregnancy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, that being said, I don't know. I think that, you know, the, the conditions that you see during pregnancy are quite unique, but as like acid and niacinamide is a great pregnancy ingredient combination for really a lot of issues. Okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> Well, there's pregnancy in its own category, whether or not it even deserved to be in this as an item, I'm not sure, but it's a really good mention. <laughs> <laughs> I guess next we'll go, I'll go with barrier then. Uh, so niacinamide is unique, again, in that it has aging benefits and it can be helpful for the skin barrier. As Dr. Shaw mentioned, uh, this from anecdote, a lot of people don't experience this. They do get some irritation from it, but generally the studies show that it can be helpful for the skin barrier, which means it's more resilient, it's more healthy, protection moisture by reducing transepidermal water loss, it's just it's healthier. So, oh, I think I know. Well, I don't know what you need to do. So if you're going to pair again the supporter mm -hmm. niacinamide. I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> As you for pair niacinamide with a key cornerstone ingredient for your skin barrier, what would it be? Ceramides? That was what, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Beta glucan, something like that. Yeah, I was going to go ceramides. I think the lipids of ceramides uh, that bear the mortar between the bricks of your skin cells that really just create a very healthy barrier, I think that would complement niacinamide very, very nicely here. 
Absolutely. Again, niacinamide, strong, strong barrier ingredient, great when paired with something like a ceramides. And there's probably a bunch of other ones you could pair with this in terms of barrier, but if you had to go with one, I agree ceramides probably be the strongest contender. Next up, I would say, let's talk about redness because niacinamide is also touted to help with redness. So post-inflammatory erythema, if you have this, if you have rosacea, you know, it's, it's often found in rosacea products. What would you pair niacinamide with to really amplify its redness capabilities? Over the counter, the options are so limited for redness to begin with, I would probably go back to azelaic acid for mm. this one. Mm -hmm. Prescription-wise, it's a no-brainer. Do you have an azelaic acid product you like over the oh, counter? Yeah, definitely. It's the Niche Beauty Labs or whatever their other brand name is, <laughs> Transparent Labs. I actually That's like this brand a lot. It's <laughs> called, the product is called Azid, A-Z-I-D. It's a 15% azelaic acid product. There are other azelaic acid products in the U.S. that may be a little bit more accessible than this product is. So The Ordinary has one, Naturium has one, it's available at Target, and you have the this one that you can order online. This one I really like a lot though, and I've used it quite a bit myself. Yeah, it's uh, it's leaps and bounds ahead of any other azelaic acid I've ever tried over the counter and from an aesthetic standpoint prescription too. Right, and with redness, redness is tough. I always say over the counter redness is very difficult. You're almost better off pairing it with a green tinted sunscreen or a green tinted makeup to just hide the redness while the niacinamide does its work and the redness kind of heals from the inside. But a lot of the redness products are gonna fall short and so you're you're oftentimes going to need to seek out prescription options. And another difficult condition to treat or get results from are, is pores, are pores, it's plural, and it can be very refractory to over-the-counter topical treatments. Structurally, you need to address the changes, and so I'm kind of like, salicylic acid could live here by removing oil, you decrease the appearance of pores, but I'm like between salicylic acid and an, ag an aggressive exfoliator, to like address the structural part more. Yeah, salicylic acid or retinol would probably be my best option here for pores. And our remedy for pore size, we put sal acid, retinol, and niacinamide in one product. But if I had to pick one to pair it with, I would say probably retinol would have the most sustained results over time on pores. Fair enough, yes. Salicylic acid, oil for sure, but then when it comes to actual pore, min minimizing the appearance, I would say retinol would probably have the best benefit. That's fair. Yeah, retinol again, addressing the skin cell turnover, like an exfoliator might, helping with the oil control. Fair, fair, complementary benefits. So that's your pair for pores. And I think the last category of benefits is gonna be its function as an antioxidant. It does this in kind of a unique way through the regeneration of NADPH. I once built this giant metabolism uh, molecular chart. I actually was big into like the biochemistry and nutrition, bionutrition in college. So I built this huge chart. Yes, it was an assignment. Yes, I crushed it. But I reference back to this every single year of my life. And uh, NAD as an antioxidant has a role here. Which antioxidant would you pair it with though? That's tough. You know, there's some questions about the stability of niacinamide and vitamin C together. They've been debunked because the conditions under which they mix these two ingredients to show that they're not stable were probably not real conditions. So you do see a lot of products formulated with both niacinamide and vitamin C. When you're thinking about vitamin C is the prototypical antioxidant. You almost feel like they should be paired together. So I would say that, but because vitamin C doesn't always tolerate well, it doesn't work well with everyone's skin. I would also say niacinamide copper peptides. Ooh, copper peptides. Oh, that's an interesting combination. Niacinamide copper. Okay, I like that. I like that. I like that. I have a strong affinity for ferulic and resveratrol, but I love the copper peptides uh, niacinamide combo. That's just such a broad benefit range. Those two, those two together, the benefits are not only antioxidant, but just so broad. So yeah, that's stellar. All right, so that pretty much wraps wraps up how you can use niacinamide in your routine to actually see some really good results. And I think it's because we've hyped up niacinamide so much over the past few years and many others have as well that now everyone feels like they need it, but then they're not happy with the results that they get with it. So everyone's skin is different. You know, I know that in this video that we're reacting to there, you know, she's struggling with some hyperpigmentation and dark spots, frustrating, one of the most frustrating conditions. And so oftentimes you do have to try a bunch of different things before you finally see results. And even, and sometimes just going into the dermatology office, getting either a prescription treatment, chemical peels, microneedling, these things help as well. And so it's not all one size fits all. And there's usually not one solution to solve every problem. Yep. And that's always the case. It's very personalized. It's always a bit of a journey. And that's why this dynamic relationship, not only with you and your skin, but sometimes you, your skin, your dermatologist in your skin can be extremely valuable. But Hopefully this equips you with some knowledge so that you can take action and help your skin with whatever one of the skin concerns that you have. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time.